All right, so number 10 in your book asks you to find essentially what would be the critical value for Pearson's R from the table in your book. So there are other calculators and tools you can use to do this, but I got a question about using the table to do it, so I wanted to give you an example. So notice for R, you're gonna have DF equals N minus two because you have made an estimate for the mean of X, the mean of Y. Uh, so you have variances, which are both at N minus one. We have two variances, right? A variance of the X variable and the variance of the Y variable. So our DF is N minus two. So number 10 gives you a bunch of sample sizes and says, okay, with a sample size of whatever number, um, using a two-tailed test and an alpha of 0.05, what's your necessary value for R for it to be meet that threshold for alpha? So the way you would use the table, you look at the top, it says if you want to do a one-tailed test. Notice this is half of the two-tailed value. So if it says two-tailed test, like our problem, we're going to go to the two-tailed one. And here they give you the options for 0 0.1, 0 0.05, 0 0.02, and 0 0.01. So if we're doing 0.05, then we're going to use the column for two-tailed 0.05, and we're going to find our DF value. So imagine I was told I had 10 people. So I would have 10 minus 2 is my DF of 8. So I'm going to go find 8, and I'm going to find 8 that aligns in the column, and I'm going to say my R value needs to be 0 0.632. So that's how I would use this table to find a critical value of R, that is the value of Pearson's R correlation you would need to obtain in order to reach the significance level specified. 